It is another cold day here in Nairobi, Kenya, East Africa. Welcome to Kenya Explained. My name is Esther Nyonje and we've started off the week with a few details here and, here and there from Mpiaros, ending it to a one million chair. You've heard about it? What? The one million chair. No, what about that one million chair from Shia? One million shillings chair. It's a wonderful chair. Really? Oh, I wish I could have one like that. For a seat, prof, yeah, yeah, at this time. Yeah, good the living. The finance bill was passed this week. That's what we want. Wednesday. We want good living like that for our leaders. At the expense of? No, that's how things work. So you work for our leaders to be happy. Really, prof? Yes, of course. But we can get nice orthopedic chairs at no, very friendly one prices. Million. The, one the comfort million. The, 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 see, the comfort and the beauty also comes in knowing it is one million. Is it because I haven't held one million in my hands? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, the, the sooner How you do, the better. How much money is that? The sooner you do, the better. <laughs> I hope Kenya's I moved from millions. We are in billions We're now. We're in billions now. The boys with millions are nothing. To join the the boys' club, you need to have billions. You have to have so billions. So what is this one billion, one million chair? They are even laughing. Oh my! They can't oh believe my. it. Wow! But the whole Senate is is discussing one million chair. But by jokes aside, jokes aside. We also need standards. You see, our rich people have no standards. People have money without standards. That partly explains why the economy can't even grow. Because look here, a guy buys a Porsche 18 million or a nice Range Rover. And he goes to drink a, a, beer, a beer of 200 shillings. Austerity mission? And leaves a ch the vehicle, an 18 million shilling vehicle, being washed using sewage water. <laughs> we have no standards. A man like this ought to go to a place where a beer is 800 shillings. And have his car washed at two, 3,000 shillings. That's how you grow the economy. By the leaders and the rich having standards, you grow the economy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talking of so we want more people to sit on one million worth chairs. William, William Odor is good. You have set the standards. Come on, Prof. <laughs> it's good to have the standards. But you know, you look at, at the expense of who are you having these standards at? It's at the expense of the taxpayer. But the people also want their rich to people want their pocket. rich and their leaders to look good. How many how many for church goers sacrifice to buy their pastors? Cars. Cars. Why? So you'll argue about that. Rich poor women contribute to ensure a pastor has a nice car. Mm. Maybe even two cars. Mm. They look at the wife of the pastor and they say no. No. Mm. Our pastor's wife cannot look like this one. Mm. We will dress her. She must, when she comes to church, she must have done a 15,000, 18,000 hair hairstyle. You know the problem no, is, is go matuta. all the way, go all the way, but do it with your pocket. No, people are willing to pockets. use their money on their leaders. And talking of the value and the stature of leaders, yeah. <laughs> are we slowly losing our national values uh, with leadership and integrity? Did we ever have any? There was a time, Prof. Well, there was, there a, was time. a country, but now we have no country. You've been saying <laughs> there was hopelessness to Kenya for the, in Kenya for the last, yeah. <laughs> the last three weeks I've been hearing you. You've the, been selling hopelessness. There was You're a country. There is no country There's right no now. country. The country is gone. Where is the country? There's no country. No. The things that happen in this country can't happen in a country where there's a country. People just get mad and, and get these people and eat them. Because now our leaders... A man can't just sign documents like this. And within 30 days or less, he has made 5.6 billion. People just go and get him and tear him with their teeth. If there was a country. There's no country. If people cannot feel anger, angry enough to get these people and want to eat them, there's no country. There are no values. We have given up all of us. Maybe we are heading there. Unfortunately, yes. We're getting to a point where the collective anger of the people will turn into torrents that will sweep us off our feet and drain us into the Indian Ocean. Because there was a time leaders were held at a certain standard. Yes, yes. You could say this is a leader by the way they yeah. speak, yes. by the way they move, by the but way no. they act, their aura. But right now you see someone like um, Moses Kuria talking vulgar and no one is talking about it. It's normal. And he's getting support from the president. Correct. Because it's normal. And, and he's, he's there was a either. country. There was? Okay. There's no country. All right, all right. A woman leader 
engages in all manner of stupid things. It is thrown all over media. And she just continues as if nothing is happening. And nobody cares. The shame that we should feel is not felt. And the president can't even save us from the shame of having such a woman as a leader. So what country? They are also a country. There's no country. Very, now. very sad. Yes, yes. Now with the passing of the Finance Bill 23-24 on Wednesday, Kenyans have to dig deeper into their, into their pockets. Uh, taxes are going high with the turnover and the VAT and fuel. And if you look at the allocations given to agriculture, 87 billion, health, 141 billion, education, billions and billions. And it, it, it only gets me thinking that for example, there is there's problem in the land ministry, and the only the only solution is to pump in more money. Is that the way to go, Prof? Do we solve these problems that we are facing each and every day with allocation of more money? You don't throw money at a problem. You think through the problem. You table the problem and discuss it and think and look for solutions. But throwing money at a problem has never solved a problem. Has never solved the problem. No. You know, you pay lip service, you say agriculture. And you give it <laughs> peanuts. And yet you say the ministry of the economy. You say you want to transform lives. You want to deal once and for all with food, food security. You want agriculture to, to, be the, to create jobs. Decent jobs. And then you, when you go to the allocation, you give it nothing. Is the problem there? allocation or the problem is the system of agriculture that's supposed to work for the people it is a lot of it's a lot it's a lot of it's a whole web it's a complex thing mm. i was arguing in a discussion one of these days i think last week if you want to go, you say you want to remove hunger in, from kenya mm -hmm. you want to create food security mm -hmm. you want to revolutionize agriculture and let's start with maize which is the staple do you grow maize in the indian ocean can you grow it on mount kenya can you grow it in the air? You grow maize on land, is that right? Where is the discussion on land before we talk about agriculture? That's it. <laughs> Where is the discussion, discussion on, land? on land? How can you talk about agriculture without a discussion on land? And I was giving this very good example. President Samia Sulu Hassan of Tanzania solving two major problems but you using one stone. Mm -hmm. Youth employment mm -hmm. and food security. She sets aside 600,000 hectares, not mm -hmm. acres of land. Mm -hmm. Gives it to young people for free. But before that, they are trained. You, you get what I'm saying? So land has been sought. Has been young sold. people have been trained so that they don't look down upon agriculture. Mm -hmm. They are enabled and the markets are sought for them. Mm -hmm. That's not enough. She starts a fertilizer plant to feed into that project now even from next year we shall be importing fertilizer from tanzania mm. you can see a thinking nation mm -hmm. you can see a president focusing on a problem mm -hmm. and coming up with solutions that can convince you she's serious land bringing young people youth unemployment training them mm -hmm. you have created youth employment look for markets because the devil in farming is in marketing mm -hmm. solve out the problem of marketing bring agriculture bring now we, fertilizer now we'll start importing maize from tanzania <laughs> you see that's a thinking person so if she tells you tanzania will no longer buy food for she's serious mm. and as we just say the yes. first question you should ask bruto if he says he's serious about agriculture do you grow maize in indian ocean no. no. On Mount Kenya? No. In the air? No. Where? On land. Where is the discussion of land? How much arable land do we have in this country? Who owns that land? What are they doing with that land? Can this country purport and expect to solve food problem, maize production, from people, small scale farmers, who own an acre, a quarter an acre? Uh, can they solve the... Because those are the people who are producing... There are no large-scale farmers in this country mm -hmm. for maize. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We subdivided land. And now maize cultivation is under those little tiny parcels of land. So you must ask yourself, if there is land in Narok, hundreds of millions of acres or hundreds of thousands of acres, who owns it? 
if they are not planting maize or wheat mm -hmm. we don't even want to take it from them mm -hmm. we tell them you must plant mm -hmm. if you don't we shall tax you or lease it out that is a government that can convince you and i that they are serious about agriculture not to talk about scandals that are being hit with the fertilizer subsidy no. With a sugar, with a sugar. All like those are put in sugar, place for people to make oils, money. Everything's for corruption money. Corruption schemes. Even fertilizer here. was for money. Uh. Let anybody come and argue with me here. Here, there, and there. And then also, um, Martha Karua announced that they are going back to. They had a public rally on Tuesday that might culminate to going back to the streets for demonstrations at the wake of the finance bill 2324. Is that the way to go? in solving this problem that yes we are going to be hit by this finance bill but now is there anything else we have to do at this point you know i don't support chaos because for us mass action is basically chaos i don't support it because i know how easily how easy it is to lose a country through those kind of things you th it's just like a joke people spill in the streets raila tells them let us resume on thursday or next week next time he tells them people will not listen they will just be in the streets Mm. Oh, let us now to Kutana next week. Oh, I'm here, you go home and rest. You'll get us here next week. That's where we are heading. So I am very apprehensive when it comes to the so-called mass action. But also those that are responsible for running the country must also know you don't push people to the wall. Even your own dog, if you push it to the wall, it will come and bite you. Yes. Yeah, is that right? Mm. So what the government is doing is pushing people to the wall. And people will come back fighting. And that fighting is what will destroy this country. Because we are creating anarchy as we see. But it looks like we are in a hopeless situation because now what are you going to do? You see, the, things are being the beauty of ho hopelessness is that it breeds hope. When things are so bad, they must bust. Something must give way. The only problem is, although there will be a better Kenya, it takes ages. Ages? From you'll be a uh, you'll be an old old woman if you'll be alive. <laughs> because well, that's when Kenya will begin from the time I to was have a semblance of and now, <laughs> now I'm a grown woman yeah. and, and we're still talking about better Kenya. Look at Uganda, 1971, when Amin took over. I was a young boy. This many years I'm exiting. Is there order in Uganda? They are still looking for order. Shadi Bari left Somali in 1991. Up to now, they are still struggling. So the moment you enter in that territory, mm -hmm. which is what the Tuesday meeting is talking about, what Manamano is about, the moment you allow yourself to enter that territory, you'd again be prepared to destroy everything you have made and start afresh. Start afresh. And take 150 years. If you are prepared, I'll be watching from wherever I'll be. I'll be watching too. You <laughs> said hopelessness breeds hope. hope. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's a good way to wrap up the show. And we hope that it's a question to you asking you, are we in a hopeless situation? Let me know in the comment section. Until next time, subscribe to this YouTube channel, like, share and comment. See you. Thank you.